Welcome back to CNN's Town Hall. We have House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi. We've been getting into issues, and there is no issue uh, that matters more than what we're going to discuss right now. A community, as we all know, once again, made victim by a school shooting. This time, it was Santa Fe, Texas, the high school there. We have Alexis Wilson with us. Alexis is a senior. She was in the school last week. She was there during the shooting. Thank God for her and her family. She survived. But Alexis, you care about this in a whole new way after seeing what happened to your friends and classmates. What do you want to ask? Hi, um, I'd like to ask, where does the government stand on arming and training our teachers um, much the way we use air marshals on airplanes? Thank you, Alexis. Please accept my uh, sympathy for the loss of friends that you may have lost at school and Thank just you. the tragedy that befell your school. Uh, I, speaking for myself and, and the, uh, most of my colleagues on the Democratic side, we do not think that that is the solution. Uh, we do think that uh, we had testimony today, I was mentioning to Chris earlier, we had testimony today from children from a wide range of uh, schools uh, who had, had uh, uh, tragedies or just even communities that have had tragedies and they were asking us to have uh, pass the uh, common sense background checks legislation uh, to pass legislation that if you know that someone is uh, can be problematic that you can uh, report that in uh, different uh, aspects of it and I know that it may be regional and again uh, this is a, a following a, a tragedy like this all we want to do is pray and uh, for your families but uh, do not support arming teachers and the rest. What some of the students would like to do, though, is say anyone who's going to be armed should be trained. And they came to my office last night, the kids from Florida, and said, can you help us get training? Veterans know about weapons. Maybe they could um, uh, 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 train people who want to buy a, a, a weapon so that they uh, uh, then have to pass the background check, but at least have uh, passed the training. So I would not be supportive um, uh, arming teachers. Do you feel that there's a little bit of an either or problem with how we're trying to approach solutions? First, let's be honest, we haven't gotten anything done, right? What killed me to, when I had to go down to Santa Fe again was it's getting so hard to look in the eyes of kids like Alexis. You're happy to meet her uh, because she's a senior. She's going to go on with her life. Thank God she survived and she's got better days in front of her. But their families, every time, they're Which never going to be the same be and the same. nothing gets done about it because it seems that there's an either or. Will you put armed guards in the schools? No, we don't want to talk about it. Let's not talk about hardening the schools. But the building we're in now, the building that you work in, the point of entry there is secure. You don't walk in with a trench coat with a shotgun underneath your jacket and get in. It doesn't happen. You know this. Why can't that be part of the equation? Talk about universal background checks. Fine. Talk about mental health. How to identify them. The money for treatment. But why either or? Why not make the schools safer? I know it's a state issue, but the, they're going to ask for issue. money, and that's where the federal government comes in. That you could offer the money to make schools so that when you go there as a guest and you walk in, of course they'll have multiple points of egress for emergencies, but you're going to be looked at when you go in that school, and you're not going to walk in with a gun under your coat. In our uh, uh, omnibus bill that we passed uh, 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 just a few weeks ago, we have 1.8, I think it was 1.8, but it could be 1.6, billion dollars in there uh, for this purpose for schools to make uh, to give them an opportunity to secure them uh, and those schools have to make those decisions but it isn't uh, the children should not have to be worried about going to school as a place uh, that that violence can occur that doesn't mean they shouldn't ha take the precautions uh, whether it's through infrastructure or whatever else they may decide that they need but I don't think you should consider it in any way an answer to what we have to do to have responsible background checks for people uh, who want to have a gun. Uh, that most, pe most people in the, in the National Rifle Association have had background checks. They, they, uh, uh, they, they know what they're responsible for, but I don't know, but the NRA is mm -hmm. a, against background checks. There are other things that we can do in terms of public policy uh, and also in terms of, of, um, of mental health that is very important in all this. Uh, but it is not, uh, uh, this is not a total smorgasbord. It is 
you have to get to systemically stop people from having guns who shouldn't have guns in the first place. And that's why we have to... All right, so let's get another question on this topic. This question comes from Michael Nevin. He's about to graduate from high school in Maryland. Michael, thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you. Uh, Leader Pelosi, you've indicated that gun safety will be a top priority of House Democrats over the next two years. Yeah. However, while you served as Speaker of the House from 2007 to 2011, gun safety was not a primary concern of your caucus or your party, and no meaningful gun reform was passed. As the American people cast their ballots for the House of Representatives this November, why should we believe that your priorities will have shifted? Well, let me just say this, that we did do some things when we had the majority. And this whole NICS program, do you know what that is? That's how the, after um, Virginia Tech, that was like the big event at that time. What was suggested that, they, that we would have this program, this NICS program, the national, how, this, how the localities give the information so that there is a database where people can check in to see if, if, if somebody should or should not have a gun. Uh, we did that. We uh, 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 strengthened it. We gave it more money, and we recently gave it more money as well. Uh, the, um, uh, the world has changed since then. People are much more receptive uh, to having uh, gun legislation. You have to have 60 votes in the Senate. Remember that you have to have 60 votes in the Senate, and that is a, a, a major obstacle to getting many things done. So if you, unless you think you're going to have 60 votes in the Senate, it's hard uh, to pass legislation. But the, what was looked for then is what we did, which was the, uh, uh, having the information of who had a gun or who ha shouldn't have a gun, and, and that is, the NICS is a very important part of what we have now but it certainly is not enough. Uh, we only had a time when we had two years with President Obama, and it was a priority, but we didn't win the election, and so, uh, so we didn't get something else passed. But that's, you know, we should, we should have. Uh, we can now. And I'll tell you this. Where did my friend go from both Maryland? I'm from Maryland, too. He's there. I'll tell you this, and I tell this to the kids all the time. I would rather pass the background check in the Congress right now, today, than win the election. Because it would save, doing it sooner would save you. Know, so, yeah. All right, let's get to another issue here that's on people's minds. Last year, President Trump is- That's as usually Chris's question. Well, I don't know, listen. <laughs> look, we, ha we had two questions on the no. shootings because I don't know anything else that's consuming our culture with so much fear and a sense of helplessness. Yes. You know, I heard my own kid, she's 15 years old, talking with her friends about nonchalantly, okay? Well, yeah, this would happen at our school, and I wonder who it would be, and what would I do? I guess I'd run this way, and I wonder who it would be, and they're talking, who would it be? And I'm sitting there, what a failure as a parent, I feel like, in a moment like that, when my kid sees this as something that's as likely to happen yeah, as, you know, anything else that happens in life. So obviously, the need is great. But Let me just say this one thing. May 29th is a, a, a day when the students, starting in Florida students, but students across the country, are going to have a national registration day. And it is, if you're 17, but you're going to be 18 by the election in November, you can register to vote. Uh, so while they're still in school, they're having this massive registration drive across the country. So if you want your views to be heard and people to pay attention. If you vote, you count, and your voice is much more important than if you don't. So I urge everyone to vote, all of us, uh, but especially the young people, to give uh, a force to their voice by voting. Participation is power. Um, all right, immigration, big issue. President Trump ended DACA, the deferred action.